Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. Welcome to the 2013 roundup of Crema Media's Real Economy Report, which reflects on a selection of stories that made news headlines this year. We begin the 2013 countdown of Real Economy Report's most watched shows with the Airbus Military A400M Military Transport Aircraft Program, which involves South African industry. Airbus Military President and Chief Executive Officer Domingo Urena hailed 2013 as the year of the A400M. The A400M program has significant South African content. Private sector company Aerosuit has six work packages for the aircraft and produces various structures for it, such as the nose fuselage linings, the cargo hold linings, cockpit linings, cockpit rigid bulkhead, the aircraft galleys and also the wingtips. State-owned Donnell Aerostructures makes the wing fuselage fairings and the center fuselage top shells. Airbus Military is confident that the A400M has a great future. It sees market opportunities in Asia, the Middle East, Australasia and South America. Our next insert at number 9 is a mining success story. The United Manganese of Kalahari Mine became a fully operational mine after it unveiled its newly built offices and warehouse in June. The 1.2 billion rand UMK mine, a joint venture between Russia-based Renova Manganese Investments and consortium Majestic Silver Trading, has become the world's third largest producing manganese mine after completing the operations infrastructure last year. Coming in at number 8 is Transnet Rail Engineering's unveiling of 50 tanker wagons which were built at its Germiston plant. Public Enterprises Minister Malusi Gigaba dubbed it a milestone for TRE, with equipment and technology worth over 20 million rand being invested for the plant to meet the specific requirements of the wagons. You know, our program to use the capital investment programs of state-owned companies to drive industrialization and localization is, is steaming ahead. This, these wagons are manufactured completely in South Africa using our design and engineering capabilities, using our skills and, and the people employed in, 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 in our uh, state-owned companies. Gold mining company Sibanya Gold handed over 100 family units to employees this year as part of its housing project aimed at encouraging family living. The 100 units were handed over to Sibanya Gold employees in Lebanon near the company's Kluif mine near Western Area in Gauteng. They were built at a cost of 31.5 million rand with each unit comprising two bedrooms with an open plan kitchen and lounge area. They are located in the secure Tweshulopele and Lahai Park complexes. This is, this is part of a, a, a much larger initiative. Um, we've made a commitment uh, of about 700 million which will be spent uh, over the next few years. Um, to date we've spent 500 million. Uh, these are family units and um, it's, it's a complex of 100 houses and um, it's, it's a phase in the, in the overall SLP. Up next at number six is the launch of four new social housing developments by not-for-profit company, the Johannesburg Housing Company. The units were purchased and refurbished during 2012 and 2013 and aim to tackle the challenge of providing adequate housing in the city's central business district. So this is part of our outcome three, the rental stock, where we roll out housing and ensure that the rental stock is being realized. Because at the end of the day, not everybody wants to own a house. There are people who just want to rent a house because they want to rent for a particular period of time. What is exciting about this development is that mainly young people that are living here. We're halfway now. Coming in at five is the news that local armoured mine protected vehicle manufacturer DCD Protected Mobility officially opened its new factory in Isando in Kempton Park, east of Johannesburg in July this year. DCD Protected Mobility, which is part of the DCD Industrial Group, is famous for its Husky Armoured Mine Detection and Clearance Vehicle and the associated mine detonator trailers, but has now diversified its range to include the Springbuck Armoured Personnel Carrier and its all-new mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle, the Mountain Lion. 
Company General Manager Andrew Mears explains why they set up the new factory. Well, the main purpose was the DCD group needed to create capacity at the old rolling stock and defence division um, to allow f to exploit the opportunities in the rail infrastructure development in the country. But at the same time, they wanted to focus what had been a very successful defence business that had been operating together there and uh, position it for growth in the future. Temporary power solutions provider Agreco officially launched phase two of its cross-border interim power project at Gigawatt Park in Rosano Garcia, Mozambique. The expansion project adds 122 megawatts of capacity to the original gas-fired facility, which now generates 232 megawatts of power to Mozambique, South Africa and Namibia's respective power utilities. NAMPOWER initiated the short-term critical supply project or STCS under which a number of short and medium term initiatives will be implemented to address the immediate power supply shortages. The purchase agreement, such as the one between Nampower and Agreco, forms part of our STCS program. As part of the STC program, Nampower will continue negotiating new purchase agreements with neighboring utilities and independent power producers, while at the same time, renegotiating existing agreements. This project is a triumph of our STCS program and its inauguration here today marks an important milestone in the development of the Namibian power sector. We've entered the top three most watched real economy reports for 2013. At number three is the Johannesburg International Motor Show, which in conjunction with the track and bus show showcased vehicles from all aspects of industry. The Johannesburg International Motor Show saw the launches and unveiling of several new vehicles set to hit the South African market this year and next, including new hybrid, energy-efficient and electric vehicles. VW announced its plans to introduce the first electric Golf in 2014 and unveiled the Jetta Hybrid, which is already in production, as well as the E-Up small electric city car and the Golf 7 Blue Motion Energy Efficient model. Our second most watched Real Economy report is the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research's Built Environment Unit, which concluded a two-year performance research study providing breakthrough information on passive energy efficiency, which could be helpful to government when implementing future building standards for low-cost housing. The big question was what do we need in South Africa? If we're going to be specifying or regulating for insulation, what should that be? So a lot of this was to try and determine, uh, try and get the answer. So that's a 150 millimeter wall, 100 millimeter slab insulation, and 40 millimeter in the roof. What we know is the wall's fantastic. It's better than what SANS 204 um, uh, is offering. So immediately SANS 204 could in fact be increased because we know it's cheap. you can do this tomorrow. It's an off the shelf. There's no work needs to be done. There's no R&D needs to be done. So we know that value can in fact be higher. Um, we know that the, the insulation value in the roof on here can be improved. Uh, and we'll do that this year and try and get a figure on that. And we know that the insulation under the slab under South African conditions is not, it, it doesn't offer you value for money. Uh, in, for two reasons. Primarily because our soil temperatures don't get as cold as you would find, for example, in Canada where it freezes. So you're not, you're not landing up with a, with a, with a, a cold soil temperature. Um, we predominantly hot, the climate the studies indicate we're going to get hotter. So we need to deal more for heat than we need to deal for cold. And now for our number one Real Economy Report show. South Africa's national oil company Petro SA aims to make an investment decision on a $375 million to $510 million liquefied natural gas import facility near Mossel Bay in the Western Cape during the fourth quarter of 2014. For Petro SA, you know, since, since uh, inception we've We've never had certainty of supply. All our initiatives have always been at most five years of gas supply. We've never been able to plan fully, and, and certainly as part of any growth strategy, you need certainty of supply. We believe that LNG gives us that. Our key drivers was uh, capex, as well as time to first gas. Um, you know, we're working towards receiving gas by 2018. We are looking at a, a near shore floating solution. <laughs> Um, we're currently evaluating two alternatives, a single berth jetty configuration and a double berth jetty configuration. We are also in discussions with uh, ESCOM, who has a um, 
Peking power plant located right next door to our GTL refinery. That's it from this year's Real Economy Report team. Log on next year for more news and updates on the economy and the best South Africa has to offer in the fields of science and technology.